Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. You should ride a bike up to Siesta Key Beach from here. That was the best advice anybody gave me on my entire Florida trip. Well, that was that one night in Daytona. That was some good advice too, but I can't talk about that on YouTube. Anyways, we're on a very special beach. This is Siesta Key. You might have heard of it before. The day was perfect. The crowd was light. There really was no better way to see this beach than by bicycle. Way up ahead at the end of that bend is Siesta Key Beach. We'll get there in a minute. We have to slow down and take it all in. I mean, this has been called the best stretch of beach in the United States. I've seen a lot of beaches and I have to say, this place is super cool. Look at that water, right? But it's not just the color of the water or the temperature of the water or the calmness of the water that makes this beach so cool. It's the whole damn island that comes with it. I explored the Siesta Key community on a weekend in mid-May. I figured about a week into the trip that this was a good time to come here to Florida. You can avoid the heat, the bugs, the humidity, and the crowds. But it's not always like this at Siesta Key. And the way things are going, it might not be like this at all anymore one day. But we'll come back to the beach later, because we have to talk about how this place is a changin', pal. Where's the beach that everyone can bring their family? S-I-E-S-T-A, what a place to be. Siesta Key, Siesta Key. It's everyone's favorite little beach. Hey, hey! Siesta Key, Florida. Well known for having soft white sandy beaches, amazing water, and a really stupid reality TV show. What's not to like? The whole island is made up of quaint neighborhoods, laid back places to eat and drink, and one hell of a village. Not too many people live on this island. Most of the people that come are tourists, and they come here mostly for the beach. A few years ago, TripAdvisor called this the best beach in the USA. And when it comes to beach notoriety, once you're on one list, you make other lists. New lists have called this one of the 10 best beaches in the world. Wow, good for you, Siesta Key. When you're in the water, you can really see why this beach is so famous. Although, after you sit in your beach chair for a couple days, it starts to kind of look like a regular beach, I guess. But it's not about what this beach has, it's what this beach doesn't have. Things like drama, trash, tacky beach shops, fast food chains, attitude, sorta, tattoo shops, rides, parking fees. Not only can you drink on the beach, they sell you the booze. I hear the police don't harass people, they educate them. But it's not like you'd need the cops much anyways. It's really safe here. Your biggest issue is finding a parking space, but most people are chill about it. This place seems kind of perfect, but there's issues here just like any other place. That TripAdvisor rating brought in a lot of attention here. Social media has blown this place up. I mean, every Instagrammer wants to take their pictures here. And recently, MTV decided to make a really, 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 really bad reality show about some kids who live here. I'm not kidding. It's terrible. Today, there's hotels going up just on the other side of the bridge, and they've just approved allowing eight-story hotels here, if you can believe it. When the Sarasota Bradenton Airport finally stopped charging $10,000 to fly in here, more people came. Now, if you don't get to the beach by 7 a.m., you might not get to the beach. Some say Siesta Key is getting too liberal. Uh-oh. Well, it's certainly more diverse, at least the people who visit. It's not just old white people coming here anymore. Many of the newcomers are from New York and California. So what is Siesta Key anyways? It's actually a CDP located in Sarasota County. Nearby are the very nice communities of Sarasota and Bradenton. It's all a very pleasant part of the state. To get there, you have to take a bridge. Siesta Key proper is only two and a half square miles in size. There's only 5,400 people here and there really isn't anywhere to add more homes. That's why they're gonna start building up. It's mostly suburban sprawl, really nice clean neighborhoods with awesome landscaping and handsome architecture. A big chunk of the island is made up of neighborhoods just like this. 
On the north end of the island, there's a big village with a few dozen places to buy things and eat. This is probably the best part of the island outside of the blue water. There are also condo complexes and private sort of gated communities here too. A lot of the exclusive places seem to have beach access. There's another smaller village in the center of town where you can also eat and stay in motels. It's much smaller, but right at the end of the bridge. This is where I got my bike from for that beach shot. I went to Siesta Key Bike and Kayak. Great equipment, good people. I highly recommend them. It's not a very diverse group of homeowners here. It's mostly somewhat wealthy white people. And they're old, too. Only 2% of the population here is millennials. But millennials don't have any money, so that's not a real shocker. JK, millennials. JK. The whole island feels like you're on vacation. Sometimes you feel like you're in a different country. But as you know, this place is mostly known for the beach. The sand here comes from the Appalachian Mountains. It's almost all pure silica. The sand and a large sandbar makes this water really fun to walk in. It's really clear and you can see fish all over and you can go way out there and still be able to stay above the waterline. I normally don't like walking in the ocean, but I spent a lot of time just standing around in it. There's three beaches here on Siesta Key. Right now we're on Siesta Beach. That's the famous one. There's also Crescent Beach. That's the one I did the long bike ride on. And at the end of the island is Turtle Beach, which is also on a bunch of lists for being amazing. I guess I can see why that would be. It was really windy, so maybe I missed something, but I suppose I could see some shades of blue in the water that seemed somewhat unique. Siesta Beach is the only beach that has lifeguards. This is Scooter. He's a lifeguard here. He's been in the area for a long time and he knows a lot about it. Local legend kind of guy. Now, if you've been paying attention, you know I've been comparing the beach sand from all the Florida beaches I visited. Scooter told me this sand here in Siesta Key is the best beach sand he's ever seen. And he stepped on a lot of beaches, people. And just to prove the point, he actually had some Panama City sand in a bag and he laid out two piles. The Siesta Key sand's on the left and the Panama City sand is on the right. You can clearly see which sand is more white. Scooter has proved his point. Scooter told me he remembers when hardly anybody was here. And now that they've been approved for eight-story hotels, he thinks the beginning of the end might be starting. I heard from a resident here who said she's worried about the funding to help this place grow. Sarasota County gives a certain amount to Siesta Key every year in funding. At some point, the budget's going to have to go up. They're going to need more crosswalks, bike paths, storm drainage, lighting, more lifeguards, and eventually more policing. Right now, the number of tourists is going up because of all the attention. And on top of that, a lot of the homes here are now being used as daily rental units. 80% of the homes here could realistically be rented out at any given moment. So there's a lot more people here than ever, and it's just getting more crowded. There used to be an off-season in Siesta Key. That off-season is almost off. All these new people, but crime's not really a thing here. There aren't any murders here. Somebody shot off a few rounds last summer and hit somebody in the butt with a bullet. That was a big deal on this island. Stuff like that happens so rarely here. There's a lot of underage drinking, some drunken fist fights, perhaps a stolen bike every now and then, but it's minimal for now. Did you know that 98% of Siesta Key is white? <laughs> what kind of suit is that, Mappy? They didn't have anything that fit me. Mappy, it's the best beach in the country. They have everything you need. Come on now. You look like a SpongeBob sumo wrestler in that thing. I told him. He wouldn't listen. Look at what you're wearing, woman. Both of you, I tell you. Both of you. It's a pretty penny to live in these neighborhoods. There isn't much under a million bucks left on Siesta Key anymore these days, which means you won't be living here. The average income for households is about $90,000 a year. So they're not rich, rich, but on paper they are. There's a lot of retirees here too. A lot of the people who work in the service industry can't afford to live here. So they drive in from nearby communities like Sarasota. More millennial rage. Speaking of trolleys, they have a trolley and it's free. I rode that thing up and down the main drag a bunch of times. You can believe that. What a better way to collect footage. It's really cool. 
There's a rope to pull to pick your stop and no seat belts and everything. Some people get around on golf carts, many people on bikes. I could have ridden my bike around the whole island if I was allowed to, and I bet it would have been a really good day. It's a bubble here, and sometimes you can let your guard down when you're in a bubble. There's change in the air in Siesta Key. This place is going to have to figure it out soon or it's going to get bonkers quick. Sure, there's gripes here. Things are going to change and some people won't like it. But the problems here are not really problems when you think about the other problems people have. Siesta Key would be very different from the place I would visit the next day. I'd say the next day was the complete opposite from Siesta Key. What I saw in Immokalee opened my eyes about the growing gap between Florida's super rich and its abject poor. So you've been there for 21 years. Give people an idea on what it's like to live in Siesta Key. It's the top beach in the country. So the white sand, the glamour, the, that seasonal burst of excitement when they come to vacation. You know, it's, um, you know, knowing that you have these wonderful walks on the beach in the morning, these wonderful sunsets at night, um, and just that vibe of a vacation destination. That's, that's the glamour of it, living yeah. it. Um, I live on the intercoastal, so I am two steps from the bay, and then I'm a block from the Gulf of Mexico. So I have it all, you know, so I get to enjoy every aspect of it as far as living on Siesta Key. You know, a, a lot of times people that, that move to a location, they, they, it's an amazing place to live, and then they actually, like, stop partaking in the things that it offers. Does it ever become to the point that you just kind of get jaded and you just forget about how beautiful it is there? Is that a thing? You take it for granted. That's, it's not that it becomes jaded. You just take it for granted. I know when I first moved there, I was on the beach every morning walking the beach. I was there every sunset walking the beach. And then you stop going less and less. And then you don't go until a family comes to visit or friends come to visit. Then you take them across to the beach and you enjoy all the fireworks displays at July 4th and the sandcastle contest in, in the, the spring. All that you partake in, but only when somebody comes to visit you. So it's not that you don't know it's there. It's that you don't take advantage of it until you have to. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Is it is it small enough that you'll have um, tiny town? It, does it get to the point that you know if some people feel like uh, everybody knows their business? Is it like that kind of place where it's tiny enough that I mean, there's only fifty four hundred people there, right? No, because that fifty four hundred people are always changing. So your next door neighbor, depending on which location you live in, your next door neighbor might not be the same neighbor from week to week or month to month. So no, nobody's in your business. Everybody's too busy enjoying the beach, the weather, and the outdoor activities it has to offer. So nobody's, I, I never felt that way in 21 years that people were up in my business. Good. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I want to hear, you know, I, clearly I don't have to tell anybody how beautiful and, and great Siesta Key is. I, I'm showing video of it. Um, but you know, there, there's always a, um, a, a medium side and, and there's always going to be, you know, negative sides to living in anywhere. Um, I'm curious to hear what you would say, what, what is not the perfect part of living in Siesta Key and not every place can be perfect. What are the, what's the downside? There's gotta be some downside, right? <laughs> well, when you live on a barrier Island, that's only seven miles long, like Siesta Key, um, you get you get used to sorry about that you get used to all season and so you get used to being able to get around quickly and then all of a sudden season comes in and all of a sudden your population triples and then all of a sudden it takes you an hour to get anywhere instead of 10 minutes to get anywhere and leaving and crossing the bridge because you know siesta key is a barrier island with two bridges north and south into the key so you time yourself when you can go across it to get accessibility to everything. That's the negative. Um, but then if you go to any major city, you're used to dealing with that traffic anyway. But um, for me, that would be your negative issue. But you learn as a local how to time it, when to come and when to go. So traffic is the number one thing. That's your number one complaint by anybody that lives on Siesta Key, is traffic. 
Yeah, I think that'd be a good problem to have uh, if that's your biggest problem. And I, I was there in May, um, and the, the beginning of May, it was like May 8th or something, and it, it, it was traffic was very light. Uh, I was like, this is great, and everybody kept saying, you wait till June comes, and, and it gets really busy there. Um, so I guess I saw the right time. Okay, May and November are quiet months. That's our best months, actually. Um, spring break is over, so at the end of April, everybody goes home. Our snowbirds go home because the end of April is when they go. Especially our Canadians, they live here six months out of the year, and so they, they leave somewhere mid-April to the end of April. So May is the quiet month. Um, May is my favorite month because of that. Um, the weather's still nice; it's not too humid yet, and you can get around easily. Um, June starts the summer vacations. And that's when the weekly person comes in. That's when that weekend person comes in or the Orlando, Tampa, the big cities in the area, they come to Siesta Key for the week. So that's when it picks up again, but not to the extremes of it is in season. Um, January, February, March, and April is peak. That's when it's the most. So you actually came the best time you possibly could come, mate. I guess I did. Yeah, I, I realized I came to your state. I think the best time I could come, kind of in between the the comers and goers and the weather and the bugs and all that stuff. So May May's beautiful. <laughs> in Florida. So I'm sure everybody that lives on Siesta Key has an opinion about how things are going there, um, and I'm sure you hear a lot of people's opinions. And I, I'd like to know what's your opinion on how things are going in Siesta Key, good and bad. Uh, coming up in the near future, how things have changed there? Okay, um, it is a barrier island, and it used to be that nothing commercial could be on this barrier island. That's why you don't see a McDonald's. That's why you don't see a KFC. There's nothing commercial. It's all private mom and pops. And I'm sure when you stayed here, you must have stayed in a condominium that was owned by somebody. So our rental program, you have to actually stay in somebody's home. Um, but now they're letting hotels come on the island. They've just passed that three hotels can come on the island, 100 rooms plus each. And so people are worried about the traffic on a small barrier island. Um, I do know Sarasota does a very good job of anything that they approve is done right and is done well. Um, am I worried about it? But yes, at the same time, I'm excited to see growth because I know the growth, every improvement they've made has been positive. So um, I would... I would like for the people that live on the key that are worried about traffic, just to remember, they bought on a barrier island. They bought on a beach. You know, you can't stop this from happening. Um, they want they want their property values to increase. They want they want to it to grow in the right way. But stopping the growth is not going to achieve that. So um, even though. It is a negative, some of it. At the same time, I think we can work with it in a positive way um, and, and, and make it still that beautiful beach that we are used to. Um, I know people that are leaving the island are leaving it because of traffic and property values. It's, it's unobtainable for the average person to live on the key now with insurance and taxes and just the values. I mean, you're looking at $1,000 a square foot for property values on the island now. That's out of most people's reach. Mm -hmm. This is home for me now. I, I don't think about going back. I go back to visit, but I don't think about going back to live. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's on vacation, retired, or wealthy. It's the happy place. It's a whole different mentality in Sarasota, especially Siesta Key. Very eclectic, as you saw. There's a little bit of everything. And it's it's uh, the village is quaint and charming and People that live here and visit here are happy people. And so you want to stay in a happy place. I'm guessing, you know, usually I ask people, how has your community changed? And I'm going to guess that you're going to say it used to be not crowded and now it's more crowded. Is there any other way that the place has changed since you've been there or in the last couple dozen years? <laughs> oh, that really makes me old. <laughs> the way, so our season has gotten longer. So it used to be that we started season the week after Valentine's Day, um, that midweek of February. And then it ended the week after Easter, no matter when that was. And now it's not that way anymore. We really don't have an off season anymore like we used to. Um, and the, that that's the biggest thing is just that we're a year round destination and we're getting younger. Um, when I moved here, the average age was 62 years of age. Now it's 40, it's 38, I believe. It's, it's a lot younger than it used to be. 
Um, now I'm the old guy in the neighborhood um, where it used to be that people came here that were in their 70s and 80s to retire. We're not seeing that anymore. Since you can work from home anywhere now, basically, um, we're seeing people move to Sarasota, um, Siesta Key, for instance, just for the lifestyle. So there's, it's not all negative. There's a lot of positive here. Our school systems are, uh, it's a little bit of uh, real estate, but our school systems are number one in the state. So we're home of Pineview School, which is the number one high school in the state of Florida, the number one elementary school in the country. So people are starting to move here for education as well. So that just, and so where do you want to live when you live in Florida? You want to live as close to the beach as you possibly can. And you know, we have not just Siesta Key. Did you see Lido Key, Longboat I, Key, Casey Key? I, I did not. I only saw I've, I did not make it there. Oh no, great, good. But that gives you a reason to come back. Yeah. yeah. We have four barrier islands off of Sarasota. And me, Siesta is my favorite. It's the most eclectic. Um and this has got to get me in trouble, but I, I call one book key death row. It's eight miles long. It's just one road. It's just Gulf for Bay. And it's just a long, clean, pristine road, but I call it death row. Casey Key is on millionaires. I mean, it's just wealth, wealth, wealth. Um, Siesta Key is very eclectic. It has a little bit of everything. And it's the best vacation destination. It's where you want to bring your kids to. It's where you'd want to come to if you were just single. It's where you want to bring your wife to. So it just has a little bit for everybody, I believe. How feasible is it for the average family to, to, to move there? I know you'd have to have some deep pockets to be able to afford to buy a house, but um, I'd imagine that the, you said the schools are great. Um, they got to just cross the bridge over. I don't think there's a school on the key, right? Outer Door Academy, which is a private school. Is okay. The yeah. But, um, and they have a high school on the mainland, but a lot of, Families will move here for outdoor door academy for elementary grade, and then the, the kids are going to um, Riverview or Pineview for the high school years. Mm -hmm. what, what the average house there is over a million dollars. I'm going to guess. Uh, do you know what the yeah. average home price is there now? Yes. Um, yeah, it's over. It's over a million. What one point two probably. Um, yeah. So a 1972 uh, thousand square foot home would run you probably one and a half million dollars. Was just a key. A one bedroom okay. condo would run you anywhere from four hundred to six hundred thousand. Two bedrooms, six hundred to a million, um, just depending on where you're at, whether you're on the Gulf or the Bay, and which part of the island you're at. The south part of the island is very quiet. What would I have to earn to make to be able to afford a, a decent house in Siesta Key? What would my average salary have to be if I was going to put twenty percent down? Uh, probably two hundred fifty thousand. Two hundred fifty k a year. Maybe I don't, I don't get into the mortgage part. Um, but yeah. I'm just saying if I had to move to Siesta Key right now, and and what and it's not just the, prop, the the value of the property, it's also taxes and insurance. Mm -hmm. So um, you're going to you're gonna spend probably twelve to 15000 a year just on property taxes and insurance for your property. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can get a condo for half a million, small yes. one? A small okay. one. You need some uh -huh. more. Yep. You can. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'd imagine that if I if I were to move, if somebody were to move to Siesta Key, bring their family, make that their lifestyle, they they would um, shop among tourists and um, deal with and eat and dine out among tourists and um, have a beautiful beach that they would share with tourists, right? I joke. I joke when I stop to let uh, a pedestrian cross the street. I say that could be my next client. So you have to keep that in mind. So as much as we love to see the tourists come, we love to see them go as well, but we realize that it worked for tourism, none of us would have a job. And so no matter how frustrated you get sitting in traffic to cross the bridge to go off the key, you need to keep that in mind. We moved here for a reason. Uh, we stay here for another reason and our livelihoods depend on it. The beach is beautiful, you know. Top, it's been called the best beach in the country. You know that one of the top ten uh, in the in the world um, by different publications. Sometimes those lists are reliable, and some of them are just you know clickbait just to get people to you know they got to write about something. You got to pick ten. Um, yeah. The water is super pretty. Um, you know what is it about that particular beach, Siesta Beach, that gets talked about and raved about all over the world in different publications? 
so the crescent shape of the beach and the fact that the the quartz from the Appalachians come down and get trapped in that crescent shape. And, you know, that sand, even in August, is still cool to the feet. It, does, it never gets hot. It's quartz. And so that alone, and just that you walk the beach, I'm sure, that expansive view, you're walking that beach and you turn around and you're on that crescent part of the beach. And sometimes you get two completely different looks. I mean, I walk the beach where there's a storm in front of me and I turn around and the sun is shining bright behind me. You, you, can't, you can't beat that. And that water is splashing up. I mean, it's, just, it's a beautiful sight. And I've traveled extensively. And it's always amazing. It's just a special beach. And, and it's all the condominiums lined up on it. And everybody on vacation. And just knowing that everything is walking distance, I think, is another big plus. And there's two bridges. There's two bridges. One to get on and one to get off. And you know, knowing which one that you want to go to, whether it's south end of Sarasota or downtown, it just makes it more appealing as far as islands go. Lynn Dunn, you should. I think you're in the wrong profession. You should be in the public relations or marketing. <laughs> for, uh, I, have been, I have been called an ambassador to Sales to Key. Look, the best part of my job is when you don't know that Sarasota in the area. I will put you in my car and I will drive you around for a day and not even show you a home. I could care less about that. I, I, I told you, I moved here from North Carolina thinking this would be temporary. I said, give myself four or five years, I'll go back. No, this is, this is the happy place. It definitely is. And it makes me feel good every time I cross that bridge. If I'm having a bad day, there's all these bridges to cross. And I'm from, I'm from the Outer Banks area, I'm from the Pamlico Sound. So I'm used to water. But crossing those bridges just make me feel good. And uh, that's what's special about the area. Look, Sarasota is, we're called the Arts Coast. I don't know if you know that or not. It's, I mean, we have more arts here than any other place in the state. We also have more privately owned restaurants than any other city in the state per capita. More retired physicians. I mean, it's just, this is the culture destination. Um, and at the same time, everybody's on vacation. So it's just a different way. It's not a working city at all. It's not like Tampa. It's not like Orlando or Miami. This is, uh, when you're here, you're here to have fun and enjoy yourself. Yeah. Uh, but the big thing about Siesta Keys, we've got, besides the younger, we didn't used to have a spring break. Now we have a spring break. We have the, I mean, it's amazing how many, you know, depending when school's out for spring break for Easter. And now all of a sudden we're a spring break destination. So um, we weren't that before. When I moved here 21 years ago, it was just a retirement seasonal destination. Now we're a spring break destination. I, I spent a couple of days in Panama City, and I'll tell you what, uh, you do not want to get that crowd. <laughs> no, I, no. <laughs> Let's see, this just it. So I'm glad you're bringing this up because people see us to Kia Sarasota complain. And I'm thinking you have nothing to complain about. Go to Panama, go to Daytona Beach, go to some of these other destinations that are really spring breaker destinations, Clearwater Beach, and you'll see what it's all about. We still have nothing to worry about. It's still a wonderful little key. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. You can get my email in the description to find out how I can help you find your perfect relocation. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.